Hello everyone, this is Charles Bridge Tech with another flashlight review, this time from Sofern. Now this here is their SF26. Now I was sent this by them directly, they wanted me to test and review. This new model of theirs comes in this box. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the version that I got here. It has the Luminous SFT40 in there. And it's at 6,6500 Kelvin. And that's been spot on for being right at around 6,6100K. So let's start off here on the specs. So you see there it puts out 2,000 lumens on the highest output. Now if you need more time to read those, go ahead and pause screen. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get this open. See what's in. Now I had done a, another model previously, the IF30, so they're really starting to put out the models. Now, the last few years, of course, it's been kind of slow because of the uh, pandemic that was going around worldwide. So it's nice to see that uh, we're getting some new models, not only from Sofern, but others as well. Now this is a complete kit, comes with everything you need. Nice packaging on here. Here's the user manual. Pretty basic on the operation on this as well. Multi-language. And we have two O-rings in here and one lanyard. one USB charging cable and most likely this is a type C it's pretty much what they're all going to now and that's a huge plus probably one of the best designs to come out for that type of cable because you don't have to worry about shoving it in there the wrong way or Go ahead and take a look here at the light. Now this here is a warning to let you know there is a protection piece on the battery. So letting you know to remove it before charging it. There it is. It's got a flat black finish on here. Compact, not seeing any issues with that. Feels good. I like this uh, grooves here on the barrel of the light. Definitely helps with gripping it, especially if you're wearing gloves, which tend to be, you know, if it's really cold out there, uh, gets cold, you want to put on gloves. They, they're so thick sometimes, you not sure how tight you're holding the light, but this will definitely help out. Now this indicator here on the barrel of the light here, letting you know that the charging port is there. I like that because uh, I don't usually charge my batteries in my lights unless I absolutely have to. I always use a dedicated charger. But that's there if you need to charge it, top it off on the go. Now the style and design on this is nice. I kind of like the ones that have the larger head than the rest of the body. No real heat sinking on this, but 2,000 lumens, probably not going to need much. Here's the power switch here and the mode switch. Lanyard holes here on both sides. I get a lot of questions regarding that, believe it or not. 
I get a lot of questions regarding the extra O-rings. I say, do you have to put them on the light? No, they're just extra. There's ones already on the light. Especially as the light gets older, if you don't keep up on the uh, silicone grease on the threads and on the O-ring, sometimes they'll get caught up and twist and you'll end up damaging it. So they provide extra. I've got a huge box of thousands of them that I've just kept. Not that I've needed to use them yet, but they're there if I ever need to. Now the machining and finish on this is very nice. It is a flat black finish. Impressive. Bezel on there looks good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look here. The special optics. Now behind that is a luminous SFT40 LED. Pretty cool to look at that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, get this open and I'll show you the battery that it comes with. Tailspring, pretty heavy duty there. Protection piece here is what you want to remove. Grease threads. Now there is a tail spring down inside of this light, so you'll be able to use an unprotected or a protected cell, whether it be a button top or a flat top. I can't say that enough, how important that is, because with flashlights you like to carry extra batteries, especially when you're out there you forget. It's nice to be able to just throw another battery that doesn't have to be the OEM with the flashlight you can just throw in any cell in there and it will work just fine so it's nice that they are doing that this here is a Sofern 21700 cell 5000 milliamp 20 amp cell should be plenty enough power I know that they keep the original OEM wrapper on them so it should provide plenty of power for this. Let's get it all back together here and now let's go through the UI. The UI is pretty straightforward. Turning that on. It does have that donut up close, but that's not the way it is in real life, especially in distance. This thing does have some very nice ability to throw that out there and Sofern has been making some of the best budget lights that you can get especially for the quality you're going to get for their lights so now we're going to go ahead and uh, go through the UI here so I turn it up it's clicking on the little switch here Now I could feel the heat of this beam from a foot away from the, maybe a little bit more. It's impressive. And then back down. Wow. Okay, so we're going to take a look here at the beam. Now you can see how precise that beam is on the hotspot almost no bleeding here but the spill area on these lights they just taper off so kind of give you an idea here how it just tapers off so some people that are wanting a little bit better spill um, 
this is probably not going to be the light for you, but if you're wanting that distance, this should do very nice. Again, a lot of light coming out of this. Wow. Can't believe how much heat I'm feeling from that far away. And that's the lowest light output there. So now let's go ahead and do the special modes. I use the same switch. Press and hold that switch. We'll get you strobe. And that is a variable speed on the flash, which is the best one that my camera can capture. And then you're going to double click. We'll get you SOS. And then we're going to double click again. And now you have beacon. Nice. Now if you double click again, it will go back to strobe. So we're going to click it one time. Now you can set this up if you want to have it on the highest output. You can use it like a tactical feel to it. Whether you just press, half press that is. It does have memory mode. So whatever you want to set it on. And then from off you can press and hold the mode switch to get that strobe. And that's all there is to this light. Pretty straightforward and easy to operate. My favorite lights are that way. I do like the other lights that have all the extra good stuff in them. But when I want a light that I'm out there doing stuff with this is what I'm gonna go for every time so feels rugged very nice build quality on this not seeing any issues and I have yet to see any issues I've been reviewing so and lights for many many years and uh, it's always a pleasure to do them and most of all they are budget friendly these are going to set you back a lot, and they make great gift ideas, especially for the holidays. All right, well, let's wait no further. Let's take this outside, see how it does in the wilderness. We are out here in the darkness with the Sulfurn SF-26. Let's go ahead and get started, see how it does. Water spout there is 38 feet from where I'm standing. 65 feet there to that tree. There's the beam on the fence. Very weak spill area on this. Let's see if it'll make the tree of life, and it does. You can see. The hot spots making 138 feet. Let's go up to the next level here. A little bit of a jump. And it is faintly making the first palm tree. So this is definitely just a pocket rocket 238 feet there it's extremely cold tonight but no wind thank goodness Some key points here playground across the park making that with ease and that second one yeah doing pretty good tree line fence line let's go up the next level Bill is now starting to become a little more usable.
You'll see that beam there and the spill layer just below it. It's got some range to this, I gotta admit. Yeah, it's doing really good. Even making a school there with these palm tree there lit up good second one as well now if you have any doubts on my distances there's a link below my videos check it out I show my testing area as well as the distances furthest palm tree there now closer one does have some range on it so I think it's 41 degrees out here a little bit of a mist out here but it's it passes through kind of a in and out so hasn't been bothering me too much out here I think it actually looks pretty cool. Beam profile here does have a little bit of illumination here at the very edge of the beam. I believe that's the highest output there. No issues with the light output. Look at that. Even those trees way out there. That is insane. Just to wish it had a little bit better spill area. Now the mist is blowing through, but even with that, still lights up that palm tree there and that one with these and we'll come back to it as soon as this mist blows through look at that <laughs> that looks really cool to the moon That's blowing off the field here. Looks like it's almost ready to pass. Let's see if we got it clear passing now. There we go. Second one there. Very nice. Cycling down due to heat. Okay, welcome back. Hope you enjoyed those night shots. <laughs> this thing has an insane amount of throw. Uh, 964 meters is not the most throw of any light, but this one for its size, that's a large amount of range that you can project that beam. That hotspot's going to travel quite a ways out there. Definitely if you're into hunting or you're an adventurer and you need something with range, these type of lights I carry, especially when they're smaller like this, just throw it in the pocket. And I usually carry a combination beam or a floodlight when I'm walking. And if I'm needing something with more range, I always have two or three lights. There's an old saying when we used to go out and do ghost hunting. Uh, you have one light, goes dead, you have nothing. You have two lights, you have one. And then three lights, you have two. It just keeps going up from there. So it's always nice to have extra lights on you if you are going to do outdoor adventures, especially uh, like this, with extra batteries or a headlamp. Uh, uh, the headlamp I always use as a I'm leaving now light. So that's the one I use to go out and just keep one of these handy. A lot of times you're wearing down 
the main flashlights, so it's always nice to have a light tool you're going out with that's fully charged, that is. But impressive performance on here. Not a huge fan of these tapering spills because they're a little weak. I like a little bit more illumination on the spill area, but if you're needing something like a pocket rocket, this is definitely going to do well for you, and it's not too large and easy to carry this as well. Just throw it in your pocket, upright, have it hanging out. I don't see any issues with this. Performance did well. Uh, you can use extra 21700 cells, so you don't have to worry about proprietary cells. Another huge plus. USB Type-C charging gets you charged up right away. Especially if you use a QC or a PD charger, you're going to be charging this up a little bit faster. One other note, I do keep these, um, especially if I'm storing the lights. I have so many, so I put those back in there, help preserve that battery life. Okay, well I want to thank Sofern for sending me this SF26 to review. Now remember, this is a complete kit, comes with everything you need inside this box to get started outside the box. I will leave a link down in the description box below. If I do get a special discount code, that'll be there as well, and that'll help you save some money on this, just in case you're interested. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thanks button. Donate to my channel if you wish. Otherwise, you can please share, like, and subscribe. That way I can bring more of these lights from Sofern to you in the future. Thanks for watching. Take care. Well, let's take this outside, see how it does in the wilderness.